Hello, everyone, and welcome to AI with Sahini, where we talk about anything and everything with regards to artificial intelligence. So if you're interested in careers, in, in systems, softwares, products, anything to do with artificial intelligence, let's say natural language processing to computer vision, this is the channel for you. So today I wanted to bring this video on the topic of pose detection, which falls under the subcategory of computer vision. So let's say that you are intrigued and interested in building softwares in order to unlock your phone using your face or in order to develop theft detection systems or automated inventory systems, there is always a need to track a few articles across frames or to even classify whatever is, is going on in that particular scene. So that's the reason why we look at landmark detection and track them across frames. And that's what we call post detection. And today we are going to be looking at post detection annotation system using V7 and how that can really help you engineer such elegant solutions seamlessly. And if you like the content, please, please, please do not forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Let's start by understanding what the current state of post detection systems are and what are the key ingredients that you will need in order to generate automated post detection systems. Now let's start by taking a look at what are some of the key post classification models, the AI or the ML models that already exist. Now the first one and the key one is called QuarterNet and this was released by Facebook in 2018. And as you can see, it detects about 14 to 17 skeletal key, key points for the human body, which it's able to track across different frames. And the second model is called MoveNet and it's by Google and it was released in the year 2021. What it does is it takes in as JPEG images as input and it superimposes skeletal frames on top of it in order to classify what is this actor actually trying to do? Is he sitting? Is he doing some exercises? What kind of exercise is this particular actor working on just by looking at video frames? As you can see, one commonality here is this attached skeletal framework that needs to, to get detected and that needs to be monitored across frames. And that is what we are trying to do in this particular uh, use case. Now, let's start by taking a look at the data that is required in order to design such elegant solutions. The first thing that you require is key points. So the key points start from the head and they can go up to the right and the left toe, right and the left arm. So as you can see in this particular use case, you have 21 skeletal key points that are tracked across different frames in order to uh, you know, classify and identify the pose for the particular actor. So all of these key points will be annotated and they will be stored in an Excel format for, for, the, uh, for the visualization to, to take place. So here is an example. As you can see, it has the key points visualized for 21 joints. And in this case, you also have a quaternion uh, description. The quaternion gives you the direction in which uh, the vector seems to be moving. And that is what is getting visualized here. So as you can see, once you have a JPEG image frame by frame, and if you have key points overlaid on top of it, you can actually visualize uh, the key frames across different uh, you know, images, and you can then classify the pose going forward. The other use cases where key joint detections or the key marker detections becomes useful is this instance where you can see the facial markers are getting annotated and this information can then be used for security and safety based applications such as unlocking your phone or in order to gain, uh, gain access to a particular building uh, or a safety vault, uh, let's say. Other examples, as shown here in this video, you will see that by detecting these key, key frames and key points across frames, you are able to detect a pose such as holding a cup or um, you know holding a particular uh, article in your hand, letting it go, which can really help robotic arm manipulations and for robotic applications altogether. So as you can see, key frame detection becomes a super important topic. Now, let's look into keyframe identification, some of the use cases that we will be looking at today. Now, let's look into some of the key point identification tasks that we are going to be taking a look today. So the data that I'm going to be using for the video today is going to come from this paper called FussyNet and the related website that talks about the, the method and the articles. What I wanted to show you is that today we are going to be taking a look at post estimation using skeletal tracking. So 
In this case, the data set, which is called the JAD data set, again, links to all of them will be in the description box below. The JAD data set is just RGB images, and these are video sequences of people. What we will be doing is we will be generating this kind of a skeletal point uh, using this annotation system called V7. And once we have enough data, once we can train an ML model in order to detect the pose end to end, we actually get extremely accurate prediction. So this is where you will see that based off of the skeletal system, now you can make a call is a particular pedestrian intending to jump in front of your car or not. So whenever he does, then the bounding box around him turns red. Otherwise, they all stay green. So what we saw saw in this in this work skeletal point detection actually helps pose detection and then it, it can really help in predicting an intention of a pedestrian so today what we will be doing is we will be using the platform called v7 to annotate the jad data set that we can see here so that we can then create such elegant solutions as we see here to fuel pedestrian intention prediction just using rgb video sequences let's get started so let's take a look at how we're going to be setting up our system. We go to data sets and we say new data set. And here I say pedestrian intention. And then I say continue. Here I'm going to be clicking on the video itself. And um, let's say that I'm just, I'm taking a, you know, fewer frames and let's say annotate the video. And now one important thing that I'll need to do is create a new class. So let's call it pedestrian and let me call it skeleton. And once I, I have the skeleton class, I'll actually have to draw what the skeleton looks like. So let's go about doing that here. All right, so we have a 16 point system and let's see how we can actually rename it. And now that we have all of the, the key points annotated, we just say add class, all right? And then once it's done, save and continue, basic workflow, and we are ready to start annotating. All right, so once all of the keyframes load, now in this case, I've actually, uh, you know, I'm sampling through, through keyframes, so these are not all of the frames, so that's why you'll see the number of frames is, is fewer. So let's start by seeing how this annotation is going to work. Here, I will start by hitting PEDS and then, and if it is off, all I do is I'm using my left and right keyboard buttons in order to align it a little bit better. So I think th this works here. Let's see if I go to the previous one. So once I'm done, let's take a look at what it would look like. So here I have the first one, second, third, fourth, fifth, and again, anywhere that you are unsatisfied, you can always go in and, you know, replug these in. All right, now that we are completely done, let's take a look at what this would look like. So I'm starting from here, 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 here here and then that's it and we just send to review so as you can see individual connecting these dots and then connecting the 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 whole skeletal system would have taken a long time but now just with this uh, you know creating a skeletal structure and updating it you've actually been able to do this much faster Finally, I wanted to leave you with this video from V7 Academy that shows you not just how to annotate humans, uh, but it can also show you how to annotate objects that require 3D key points uh, in order to you know, look through them. And also how to annotate you know, objects such as eyebrows, smiles, 
face mesh, all of that uh, you'll be able to do for, for your particular use case once you follow the steps in this particular tutorial. So I highly recommend you check it out. I hope this video was useful and I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Stay tuned.